Hey everybody, Chris here with Chris Cross Crafts. On today's episode, we're going to look at Saw Stop Part 2. Except this time, we're looking at all the things you had built around your saw. It's inevitable when you buy a new saw, the things that worked with your old one, well, they may not work anymore. So we're going to cover today how you update some of those things, and in some cases, you completely replace them. And that'll include my sled, so you won't want to miss that micro jig update that I do with that. So stay tuned, and we'll walk you through what happens when you upgrade a saw, and you have to update everything around it. First problem was the old outfeed table frame was too tall for that rail. Stuck up above the table, that wasn't going to work. And the slots didn't line up either. And well, neither did the dust chute from the old table saw for the router table. So I had to completely rebuild this. So first thing I needed to do when I ran a level from the saw to the outfeed table, it was a little bit short. The uh, other saw was a little taller. So this was the solution I came up with. Instead of cutting the bench down, I raised the saw. Easy fix. Next thing was I needed to adjust the frame. Since the rail height wasn't the same as the old saw, I just had to trim a little bit off of that so that it would properly fit. And as you can see, after just a little trim, I was able to get the right height. I didn't want to completely have to rebuild this frame too. The old top had 8 inch hardboard on top of the plywood. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding little strips of 8 inch hardboard on the side of the outfeed table that lips on the ledge on the actual workbench on the other side of the outfeed table. This gives me the spacing I need and gets the top up flush with the workbench. Here I'm just scabbing a little extra board on the face of that so it gives me a little more support on the little ledger strip that I have on the back of the workbench. Just some glue and some brads to hold it in place, all it needed. And now to recut the top. In hindsight, I wished I had just rebuilt the frame. Oh well, since the saw is longer, that would have come in handy. Here's a good reason why you need an outfeed table support. Obviously, I didn't have enough support. So, I had to come in and pull the rest from the backside. That is not the way you want to do it. So, do as I say kids, not as I do. And now that the top is cut, everything looks good. Got a little fine tuning to do. I would say that would work. Like I said before, in hindsight, I wished I would have just completely tore that skeleton apart, made a brand new frame, and put a longer solid top. I didn't. So, my fix is I'm going to make an auxiliary top that's sort of adjustable. Why? Well, this saw is longer. And the problem I have is with thin stock, and I'll explain more on that later, it tends to catch when there's no support. So this is just making a rudimentary frame for a, an adjustable top. And I have to repeat those same notches on this auxiliary top that I did on the other because it has to it has to lip in two places it has to lip on the back side of the rail on the saw and it also has to lip on the ledge that's on the back side of the workbench so a little trimming notching and making it work and there's the skeleton one of the things that I was frustrated a little bit on my last outfit table was if I was using, using thin material, a lot of times it would catch because it would, it would have no support here. So what I've done is I've made an adjustable outfit for when I'm using thin stock material, I can slide this out as far as I need to and I'll have full support from here to the bench. When I don't need the support, well, I'll just simply slide it right back over. So this is just sort of a sliding adjustable outfit table Whatever I want to call it, or you want to call it, this is just a little bonus that I thought I'd add on since I was able to reconstruct this. So I'm going to finish this part and get it all fastened down, get my, my uh, uh, 
grooves routed in for each of the tables so I can actually slide a dovetail clamp in from the outfeed in and then I will line these up and get these cut as well. So enough jibber jabber, there's an outfeed table. Well as you can see that looks pretty good right up next to the old outfeed table. And I can easily slide that over if I need support on thinner stock. So here I'm just taking an oscillating tool and I'm just trying to cut a thin line to uh, get a clean cut right on this piece. This is going to be the cap, if you will, for the dust collection chute. And I'm going to reuse this piece. That's the reason I wanted a thin line. And a couple straight cuts with a jigsaw take care of the rest. And there it is. Not pretty, but it gets the job done. Now this is in addition. The router table fence does need dust collection. So I thought, well, I'll add it into the table. And I didn't want it sticking up, and I just didn't want a hose coming up through there. So my fix is to drill this out. And uh, luckily I found the right size bit uh, to be able to bore that hole. And uh, using the right combination of that bit with a rabbiting cutter to get me just the right depth to be able to sit that in place. Now that's just below the surface so it won't catch on anything. Put a couple screws in there and we're good. Okay, so I had to come up with something a little creative because the fence on the router table doesn't have a four inch clearance and I needed to mark off in four inch increments to be able to do um, some insets for the micro jig. So here's what I came up with. Don't laugh, it's redneck, but it works. So since I have to do these every four inches, what I've come up with is I've eliminated the router fence, I've set up the saw fence and the saw fence only comes so far because I have this much here. So I have to do these in four inch increments. So I've created a, sca a scab block that's gonna be giving, giving me my four inch clearance. Turn it sideways, that gives me my eight inch clearance. And then I've got a small two inch that's gonna give me my um, 12 inch clearance from here to, that, to there. So here's um, sort of what I've come up with. I used the micro jig clamp underneath and clamp this board to create a stop because I don't need to go all the way through. I'm only going three inches. So this gives me the three inch clearance. I went ahead and mounted this block over here just to give me some extra support once I start moving that fence out. And then I've got this here just as a backup to the backup uh, to prevent this from moving as I bump into it with the material. So uh, again, redneck, uh, yes, but will it work? Who knows? Well, just a teaser there, it does work. Uh, as you can see, that is allowing me to make those little cuts and still giving me plenty of support. I took my time because this was, um, you know, a finished piece, so I didn't want to have to mess with this too more, any more than I had to. And this worked pretty good. I could have done better. But, for what I was needing to do in only a few cuts, I originally was going to make a jig that would literally insert into the previous cut, but decided to go this way instead. Who knows what I was thinking. But this will make my life so much better when it comes to the workbench, being able to utilize that micro jig clamp. And there we go. And you can see now I can access the micro jig clamps from the back side. And in typical Chris fashion, I thought I hit record, but I clearly hit something else and didn't get any footage of me actually adjusting this, this lead. So here's a rundown, sort of an overview. 
I did use a straight edge because the fence did want to bow when I released all the screws. I used the micro jig clamps to keep everything clamped down, used the original kerf line which was thin kerf, lined it up with my new full kerf blade, and then adjusted the fence before reinstalling the runners. And it was a lot of screwing around after that to get the fence re-square. Feel free to stay tuned after this video and you'll see a footage of just how many times it took me to get it square. Hmm. I do love that overarm dust. You can push that thing away, swing it in when you need it. It works very well. Now here's an upgrade. Because my old data set was 6 inch, I needed an 8 inch to go with the saw stop. So I picked up the new data set they offer and a data cartridge. Everything fits nicely in the case and stays out of the way until I need it again. So, what are my thoughts on this whole rebuild? One thing about moving this is I did have to shift my dust collection that way because this is a longer saw. So I went ahead and took advantage of that and I added a piece of long hard pipe down to my manifold. That gives me more stability here uh, for adjusting and opening up these gates. Before, this was a little weeble wobbly. Now, very strong, very sturdy, and I have full pipe all the way over to the saw and to the router table. As you can see, works like a champ. So that does come from across, down under, one long piece of hard pipe there. I did have to elbow up because of the, um, the way the mobile base sits. I couldn't shift that any further that way to let that come in and elbow in, but that's okay. I'm getting plenty of suction out of that. Uh, from here, I have this Y coming off at two and a half, and then the elbow coming up at four. The elbow coming up at four is coming to my main system here, and the two and a half inch is coming off at another Y, and let me get around there. So I've got a blast gate that controls the outfeed table port, and I have another port coming off over to the router, which goes up under there. I'm hoping, hoping soon that I'll build a box in here and this will change. But for now, that is what I got. Uh, but that does do a good job of pulling all the dust collection down. So that's the same system I had before. I just tweaked how it was routed. So there you go. These are all the peripherals that needed to be up and running. I'm excited about this. This is a definitely an upgrade. I got a little more modification I'm gonna do here and over here and even something in the rail. Uh, but for the main ad agenda, with the, which was the sled and the outfeed table and everything to get me up and running, I'm there. So this is Chris with Chris Cross Crafts uh, doing a final run through of the peripherals that went around my saw stop saw. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop me a little comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are and uh, maybe your opinion on other things I could do to make this even better. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, this is Chris with Chris Cross Crafts and we will see you later. Squaring a new sled is a lot easier than re-squaring an old sled after you've updated it to a new saw. So, the Microjig inspired sled is now square to the new saw stop saw. And it only took me a couple of tries. But I nailed it on that last one though. <laughs> oh.